So, the ornate outer doors of the castle hang open, flanked by fluttering torches in iron sconces. Twenty feet inside the castle is a second set of doors. And I'm going to move you guys to here. You will find yourselves over here. Okay. Um, in the distance, you can hear the playing of a large pipe organ. Um, the huge doors remain firmly shut in front of you. Gemma sees black all around her on the map. I yes. don't know if that's yeah. on the map. Yeah, That's see. probably because there's no... Hang on. Let me look here. One second. Uh, yeah, I think that's because this is pitch black, this chamber. But oh, let me double check because I might want to make sure that we have uh, token vision is on. Does he have the copyright to use this black paint? I don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to like pay a guy a bunch of money to use this. Okay. Uh, in any case, the doors ahead will creak open. Um, revealing a much larger chamber. And um, I'm just going to see if I step one of you through it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, as soon as you go through this, you will be able to see. Because this is like pitch black with the doors open or with the doors shut. Okay, hold on. Let me go to the lighting. Action here. And remove that. And now you'll be able to see. Oh. Here we go. You can kind of, they can peer through into the chamber ahead. Okay. Well. Go, does it go on feel? In. How does the air feel in here? Um, cold and um, <laughs> a little musty. Not too bad, but there's definitely a little dankness to the air. I'm not moving any of your tokens. You will make sure you'll have to make sure you're moving them, and where they are is where they are. So. <laughs> well, where's okay. the? Where's the dining room? Okay, so the large chamber that you've just stepped into. Zoom out just a fraction. Uh, you will see that <clears throat> there is a large set of doors um, directly opposite you. Cobwebs stretch between the columns that support the vaulted ceiling of a great dusty hall dimly lit by the sputtering torches in iron sconces. The torches cast shadows across the faces of eight stone gargoyles squatting motionlessly on the rim of the domed ceiling. Cracked and faded, ceilings, frescoes, and covered by decay. The double bronze doors ahead of you stand um, into the east are closed. To the north, a wide staircase climbs up into darkness. A lit hallway to the south contains another set of bronze doors, through which you can hear the tones of the music that is being played. Just then you start to hear very loud, echoing footsteps coming from your left. And a solitary, lone figure wanders down the stairs. You have seen this person before. Last time you saw him, he was sitting atop the coach on the edge of the lake. He walks forward and with a very gleeful look on his face, he says, you are finally here. Excellent, excellent. 
I trust your trip was not fraught with difficulty. Uh, the coach hastened our travel quite some. Good, good. I hope you have all bought two very important things with you. Winning um, personality and a side dish? I was referring, of course, to your appetites and your manners. Oh. Too far off, Jim. But please, uh, his lordship awaits you. And with that, he extends a left hand to kind of offer you passageway down to the south. Please step this way. Uh, th thank you. Uh, yes. Come on, guys. I step in the exact way that he steps. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, doing this bit. <laughs> I'm doing that bit. Nice. <laughs> That's a dead bit if I ever did see one. Yeah, it is. You'll get a nudge from me. I'm smiling a little bit, but like fighting it. <laughs> I'm going to walk behind my dad in an orderly fashion. Which way did he go? Sorry. This way? Yeah, step this step way. Down you. And he's kind of sidestepping down with you to... I sidestep down with him. <laughs> it's a beautiful castle. It needs a little personal attention, but it is indeed a magnificent and splendid building. It's very old. Oh, as old as time. Got good bones, though. It is strong. Very strong. Octavius is going to walk over to the wall when no one's looking and kind of like kick it. Okay, uh, <laughs> it is indeed very strong and very stone. <laughs> Just keep walking. <laughs> I assume we can hear the organ playing. Uh, it's coming from this direction, yeah. Is he kind of ushering us that way, or...? Pretty much. Okay. Then, um... Uh, thank you. Again. Okay, once you all kind of get close, he goes over and like, takes a position between the two doors. As if he's like waiting to open them for a grand entrance for you. Hmm. He says, Do you need a moment to prepare yourselves? After all, it is. Not every day somebody meets royalty. Mm, that's a good point. You, little one, don't be afraid. Come closer, closer. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, Gemma, give me a perception skill roll. Seventeen. Okay. And Octavius, give me a perception skill roll, seeing as you two are at the back. Okay. I love this cover. This is great. <laughs> Where? Here we go. Perception. Strauss with it, dude. <laughs> too busy looking at them. Okay, How then it is Gemma. Is. Yeah. Okay, Gemma, you get a weird feeling like eyes are, like, peering at you out of the darkness as you kind of glance over your shoulder into the alcove. Briefly, you see the face of a young woman. Maybe even younger than that. Probably a girl. She peers out you, uh, peers at you briefly from behind the wall of the large kind of circular stairwell, peering out of the dark hallways. And then the second your eyes catch her, you see her, <gasps> and she ducks back as quickly as possible. Um, with that, before you have time to ponder anything else, 
the two large doors burst open as he flings them open with a grand gesture. And at that point, he kind of introduces you to the chamber ahead. He says, His lordship awaits you. When the doors fling open, I back up into Douglas, like on the side a little bit, you know, not knowing what to expect. But, uh, 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 hey, hey, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. Easy. It's all right. Just, just, a, just a dining room. No, I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. Says, yeah, anyway. Oh, please. Yep. You I'll um, prostrate a little as I walk in. Come on now. Follow in. Okay. As you all cross the threshold into this chamber, you hear a loud in the distance from the north, followed by another fainter and then a As you are blissfully aware that all of the huge doors between you and the outside have been closed and the drawbridge has just been lifted, it would appear that you are now quite contained inside of Castle Ravenloft. With that, Rahadin bows and says, I will leave you to your host now. I will see you for dinner later. <laughs> and he wanders off. Okay, um, this chamber. Torchlight flutters against the halls of this vaulted room. To the east, an arch hallway um, has led into this huge, big, open dining room. Three enormous crystal chandeliers brilliantly illuminate this magnificent chamber. Pillars of stone stand against dull, white marble walls supporting the ceiling. In the center of a room, a long table is covered with a fine white satin cloth. The table is laden with many delectable um, dishes that are all kind of covered up with large silver, or silver colored at least. Um, what do they call those things? Um, serving plates, anyway. Um, fine, delicate china has been placed in each position. At each place is a crystal goblet filled with an amber liquid with a, delic with a delicate tantalizing fragrance that you can smell from here. At the center of the far west wall between floor and ceiling mirror stands a massive organ. Its pipes blare out a thunderous melody that speaks in its tones of greatness and despair. Seating at the organ, Fading or facing away from you is a single caped figure. He's pounding the keys with rapturous ecstasy. The figure suddenly stops, and as a deep silence falls over the dining hall. He doesn't turn. He has just gone silent. was outstanding. I've never heard anything like that before, honestly. That's incredible. Tell me, does, it, does that stem from the Vistani, or is that more just your own work? I... Right. He slowly I stands the influence. up. Fluffs his long, flowing cape out from underneath where it was kind of bunched up where he was sitting. Sidesteps the organ and turns slowly all the way around. Before you is a slightly pale-skinned but incredibly handsome-looking individual. He has stunning features, um, high cheekbones, slicked black hair. His dress is impeccable and clearly um, has afforded himself no small luxury. 
in adorning everything that he is wearing from the golden jewelry on his fingers and around his neck um, to the exquisite um, high, high contrasting fashions that he's wearing. Albeit that they're a little bit, you know, yesterday. <laughs> Okay. A hand motions with one big sweep. And then it kind of bows very low and very humbly and graciously. I would like to return that bow. I'm going to kind of gesture to everybody like, oh, of course. Yeah. Oh. Yes. He slowly <laughs> steps oh, <yeah>. down. <laughs> and hovers his right hand over the chair at the end of the table. And then once more goes with a sweeping hand gesture. I look at the, I look at the seatings to see if there's a placard or something that says where I should sit, because otherwise... Um, ironically, yes. There are indeed name cards. Oh. Um, Gemma, you are to sit here. Oh, no. <laughs> Trip, you are to sit here. Walk over solemnly, slide the chair. Sit down. All right. Um, you have got Octavius seated here. Okay, so walk over. Um, okay. And um, then um, Douglas. Uh, um, and uh, Seth are seated here. Yeah. Give, uh, give, him a, give him a hand, please. Excuse me. Does, yeah. do maybe, yeah. um, does someone maybe have like a like a boosty seat or something? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm going to bundle up my cloak and kind of set it there for him. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and even still, my head is here to the table. <laughs> right. Once He's everybody like... else is set down. <laughs> yeah, once everybody else is set down, I'll, I'll join. Okay. With that, Strahd kind of walks slowly round behind Gemma's chair, lingers there for a moment, and then slowly sweeps down to Douglas and Very down stiff. to Seth. I'm just staring straight Fairly into quickly, my empty seat. He scarpers around the sides of the table. And then again, coming up nice and close behind Octavius, he pauses briefly, then moves on ominously to trip, before eventually returning to his position next to his chair. Still, he has not said a single word. But his eyes have been, like, glued to all of you, like, rather, almost inanimately. Probably just making sure our napkins are on our laps, kids, right? Everybody <laughs> got your napkin on your lap? Yeah, Please, of course. Sir, Lord, okay. do join Very us. Good. Okay. He reaches as if he's going to pull the chair out, and as he does so, completely vanishes into thin air. <laughs> With that, you hear loud footsteps from the back of the hall as Strahd von Zarovich enters the chamber. <laughs> he walks in and says, I am so glad you were able to acquiesce to my request for dining with me. Please. I want you to treat this chamber as your own dining room, as if you were to be living here. I wish you nothing but comfort and pleasure while you are my guest. 
And with that, he will go all the way up to the end of the table, pull out his chair, and sit. Since you have come to my beloved lands, tell me, what do you think of Barovia? Um, any of us, or sorry. <laughs> uh, he kind of says that with like a sweeping gesture and looks across, like from his okay. right, with a sweeping motion to the left, like whoever wants to open up, please do so. Um, I am quite impressed by the creativity of the folk here. We've run into uh, interesting types of people, one who is able to make pies based on human meat. Not a fan of the pies. Just gonna say we're not not a fan of those. What is this you talk of? Please, my dear, you will have to speak up. You are quite quiet. I... Um, I said the creativity of the folk who live here, I... I quite admire, in a sense, um, nothing I've seen from where we're from, such as the pies made of flesh, human flesh. One star we gave the pies. Not going to go back there. Pies Still made creative. of human flesh. Pray tell, where did you find this sick depravity? Oh. Um, outside of Velaki somewhere. It was an old mill that had been used instead of grinding wheat as it would be it selected the bones of children something like that this it was not clear on the menu that that was the ingredient um the pies this is very disturbing to me i will have this investigated and whoever is a responsible will be punished most severely, I assure you of this. Oh, good. As it should be. Beautiful sweeping views, though. <laughs> ah, yes. The scenery in Barovia is breathtaking, is it not? The way the light kind of filters over it, everything is just very well exposed with it. Very soft lighting. Makes you kind of look and feel younger. Ah, yes. An interesting observation. To be sure. I trust uh, you are all hungry. Very much so. Ravenous. I myself Not have pies. already dined. But I trust my presence will not disturb you as you enjoy the delicious feast that has been prepared meticulously for your pleasure. Wait, you ate before we got here? <laughs> I am afraid so. Uh, Octavia's gonna look over at Douglas. That's like, that's rude, I thought. Yes, uh, <laughs> normally you would uh, wait for your guest uh, before having dinner. Uh, it's true. Um, maybe in this instance, though, we could we could uh, let, let, let that slide. Oh. I will, of course, enjoy a nice glass of wine along oh, there, there with you. you. But unfortunately, my palate is a little bland, and the food that we wanted to have prepared for you, it is not to my taste. But, oh, um, right. of course. If you are Very ready to begin. And he picks up a small little gold bell ding, 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 and rings it. Almost as if he was waiting behind the door as Rahadine immediately comes sweeping into the room carrying a large tray. And what exactly are you serving? Not any bones of children, right? He comes around and... Uh, That's a huge jest. Okay. I, I kind of elbow Douglas in the Sorry. side subtly. <laughs> Rahadin says, <clears throat> I have prepared a meal for you. 
that I know is going to be one to remember. Oh, but please, um, first, may I suggest you toast to your host before you on glasses of Champagne de l'Estampe, thought to be no longer available in the valleys, but my master has a most robust wine cellar. I'm going to pick up my glass and raise it. Okay, Strahd say, picks up his glass with red wine in. To, to um, my lord Strahd for graciously hosting uh, we who are well beneath you. Um, and thank you for lifting us up tonight and with this meal and um, this beautiful place. And with that, he takes a small sip. And places his glass down. Okay. <laughs> After that, um, <laughs> he lifts up the top Ooh. of the big silver dome Ooh. and brings around and places near the center of the table a selection of hors d'oeuvres, um, which is looks to be like caviar um, and pâtés on small, individually cut, little kind of dried crackers. He says, These are a delicacy. We harvest the caviar from the Lake Sturgeon, and the patty is made of venison liver. It has a rich and delicate flavor. Please, this will help increase your appetite for the rest of the fine dining that we have for you this evening. And with that, he takes a subtle bow and then exits out the room. With that, Strahd just looks and says, Please, indulge yourselves. Thank you. Gonna go ahead and take a plate and kind of set it between uh, me and Octavius. Be like, you'll probably like the, this one more than that one. And I'm not even looking at what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just looking at Strahd and Fear. Like, <laughs> okay. Um, he okay. just pretty much just sitting there, kind of like with his hands folded on politely on top of the table, um, and he just has this kind of enigmatic smile across his face the entire time watch my dad to see if he eats it and yep. if, he, if he does then I'd take a bite also I'm gonna give, yeah, a, little I sniff, give a little sniff okay mm -hmm. oh, um, I just pop it in my mouth <laughs> it was shaking in my yeah. hand my hand was shaking so much it was kind of sliding all over the apple <laughs> okay mm -hmm. um, cool. yeah I mean it is the finest quality caviar that money could possibly buy um, the pate is everything that he said it was. I don't know if those are things that your characters like or don't like. That's your choices, <laughs> but... Um... Doesn't matter. Still eating it. Still eating it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll actually bring that up and be like, well, I always dreamed of actually trying these. It's just... I never imagined any point in my life I'd be able to do so. And then as I'm like kind of eating, I'm like, but then I never even dreamed of a place like Barovia. <laughs> it's... Uh... Barovia can haunt your dreams for all eternity, even after you have left its charms. It can haunt the dreams of your children and your children's children for all time. Hmm. No, no, thank you. <laughs> is that an option or if you do not find Barovia to your liking I'm sure you will find that you have other dreams different dreams no 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 it's it's fine uh, sweeping Just views we love it here. sweeping views and all that it's fine I will say I've learned more in Barovia 
that I've learned of myself my entire life outside. It does have a way of introducing you to your inner self, does it not? It is one I've learned about myself. One place that can uncover your true bravery, honor, trust, weakness. All of these things can be found here in Porofia. Things that you never knew about yourself can be revealed in some of the most surprising ways, as one of you already knows. With that, seeing that no one else has eaten any more hors d'oeuvres, he rings his little bell, and Rahadin sweeps in again. <laughs> this time carrying another plate. Um, as he gets there, he puts five silver bowls on the table, and then from a large serving bowl and some huge tongs, he starts bringing out what looks like fresh greens, grapes, walnuts, some kind of dressing, as he puts a small, um, fresh salad in front of each of you. He says, These are the freshest greens that could be found, and rare local sourced grapes from a vineyard that I believe you may have been to. These black walnuts can be found deep deep in the forest where the uh, ground is dark and rich and the roots grow strong giving them a vibrant and bitter taste enjoy and then he backs out of the room yet again <laughs> i once again wait for my dad to start eating before i eat very hyper aware of every motion I make. Okay. <laughs> to do the wrong thing. Make sure to pick up the correct fork and show my children <laughs> how to eat properly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and I follow. <laughs> give it a little yeah. little bite. Right. Um, as soon as you put the first bite in your mouth, Seth. Tell me, Seth. <laughs> what have you been doing since you first? entered my lands. Perhaps you could regale us with the story of the travels of you and your family. Uh, well, um, we, we got your basket uh, to start when we entered, uh, and it was much appreciated because we were well, lost in the, in the mists. Um, chase chasing after a lost wedding dress. Right, right? That's what we were doing. Um, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, really, it's just finding our place, uh, you know, Trip and myself, uh, we're used to traveling the lands of Arconis. Uh, I'm a simple man, so I go places, and I, well, I'll be honest, I get in fights, I punch people, uh, it's my job. A fighter, showman kind of thing. Um, no, it's for entertainment, yes. Yeah, ah. for entertainment purposes. And, um, of course, I didn't do any of that here, watchingly, uh, because I didn't want to offend anybody. And that's when we started the village and went to Balaki and just seeing the sights and meeting the people. Nice people. Ah, yes, the people. Yes. Often I stand on the balcony here at Ravenloft and peer down at the village of Barovia. I watch them scurry around like ants, living pointless, non-existent little lives. Tell me, did you find anybody there of interest? Anybody in the village that drew your attention? Uh, yes, actually, there was a, um, a head of an orphanage with a, with a whipping stick. Uh, that was a. <laughs> Caused quite the, 
Velocity. Lively discussion between me and my brother here, and I'm going to nudge <laughs> Douglas a little too hard because oh. I want the attention to go off. I of me. was not aware that we had an orphanage in the village of Barofia. Uh, in in Velaki. Lord. Oh, I was referring to oh, Barovia, the, yeah, the village. The area. After all, this is where you came to first, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, right. Yes. Uh, I skipped over that part because um, we were so disoriented, you see. Oh, I understandable. So, but yes, did you meet anybody there that struck um, out? Well, there was there was the uh, the, the burger, right? Uh, oh, ah, yes. Burger. You arrived at a very unfortunate time. I understand he had recently met his demise. We really helped with his funerary rites. Yes, Nothing. leaving behind a son and, um, I believe a, a daughter as well. Did you perhaps meet either of them? Uh, yes, both. They actually asked us. My apologies, you were speaking to Seth. This is... No, no, no. no. This is fine, fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm a man I of few words. I hear from all of you. <laughs> um... The young man who was to take over where his belated father left, would you consider him to be capable of managing my village for me? I would consider him more capable if the circumstances surrounding might not be so turned against him. He seems to struggle with uh, the favor of people a bit, but... He seems yeah. to have a plan in dealing with that. The and... peasants are ungrateful. They do not appreciate all that nobility does for them. They are incapable of such appreciation. Yeah. But at yeah. least he has his sister there to assist him. Does he not? I believe so, yeah. yes. He has, uh, he has a sister. Yes, good, good, excellent. He has and, uh, a lot of spirit, that one. Oh, she is a spirited child. Well, hopefully she will not get herself into too much trouble. And maybe she can be of assistance to her brother as he tries to administer as best he can the rulership over the village of Barovia. Perhaps I will pop down there in the near future and visit him. Make sure he has everything he needs to do a proper job. And please, continue to eat. I did not mean to interrupt you. Not at all. <laughs> take another fork. <laughs> put it in salads. my mouth, wait a second to see if I'm talked to again, then take the bite. Hi. My salad is, my salad is gone. Uh, you already finished it, or you threw it under the table. <laughs> <laughs> Very hungry. Okay, he says, um, So other than this individual, you said you found your way to Velaki. Yes, Velaki is a place that I have not visited or paid any attention for a long time, it would seem. It has been a boring place. Nothing interesting has happened there for a long, long while. Oh, but perhaps things have changed. You, young one. And he kind of like looks at um, Octavius. How did you find Velaki, young man? You want me to be honest? Well, of course. We are all friends here. Honesty is the Should... only thing... That should concern all of us tonight. Octavia shoots a quick look over at <laughs> Douglas. Uh, yep, you heard the man. Honesty is very important. Okay. With your blessing, Father, I respectfully say that this place is the pits. <laughs> he spits out his wine a little bit. <laughs> I mean, but in a good way, right? Is there a good way for something to be the pits? Yeah, pits are very important to uh, the uh, no. 
pits are dark and dank Nature. and smelly and stinky and well you Newt's, may Newt's live there. It's important I, for Newt. I else. do not want I do not want to be in a town of Newts, mother. <laughs> And while my appearance may lead you to believe that I thrive in such places, it is not to my liking. I like to be the darkest. I like to be the dankest. I do not like it when my surroundings precede me and my whole vibe. Now, that's not to say there aren't interesting things here. I have been looking, collecting, learning, journaling, jotting, drawing, doodling. But overall... I would give it to Velaki thumbs down. And he goes back to eating. <laughs> so, okay. so sorry. He he's he's just hit puberty, so he's a little um you know how that goes. Uh, uh not start at getting all. a little moody. Um <laughs> I feel he the the joys of youth. Yes, exactly. The joys of youth. But I have found the younger the soul Often, the more truthful it can be. Thank you. That's all I've been trying After to say all, for years. Lies are for the weak, as one of you already knows. Wait, sure. who, who, who ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and he rings his bell. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Does he look at anyone in particular when he says that? Yeah. He, he he kind of like just literally like scours all of you with a knowing look. Like deliberately not focusing on any one of you specifically. Hmm. I love him. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rahadin comes in and he says, This evening you have a choice for your main course. Grilled Scaromare razor fish or quail with roasted potatoes, asparagus, and carrots. The Scaromare razor fish, I believe, is considered a delicacy in the lands of where you come from. The quail were all captured and hunted in and around the forests of a village known as Mindenbrook. Local fare for our honored guests. Which would you prefer? And he looks at um, Octavius first. You know what? The dealer's choice. I like you. Something about you. I trust you. <laughs> then you fishy the right tees. Fishy tees, for yes. Growing boy. All right, and he slides a plate. Um, basically, it's like a large grilled fish in the center, resting on a bed of delicately cooked vegetables, um, and a beautiful kind of aroma of saffron is like lifting up into your nostrils. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and for you, my are you not dressed so nicely? I'm glad you put on an effort to come see my lord. Uh, of course. Of course, I've always I wanted to meet a lordship, as it were. Um, I'm in the line of work, or at least was, to hopefully become a part of a chamber some way. But uh, as much as the fish does take me home, uh, the quail more reminds me of the mountains here, and God, they're a sight. Um, I'll go with the quail. Okay. Um, he gets you a small quail and puts it on the platter of the vegetables and wishes around to a young Gemma. And for you, my dear, what would you like? Fish, please. Okay. Um, platter of fish for you. Perhaps you would like both. You're a large and strong man, after all. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, that that was going to be my question. Okay. Um, yep. So he'll basically put the, the fish down on the platter and make room for the quail right next to it. Thank you. And the same for you. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. Very much. Um, as you notice that he literally, as he does so, had the exact number of quail that was necessary and the exact number <laughs> of fish that was necessary. Mm-hmm. 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 Enjoy. And off he goes. I had some of my associates venture into your lands on my behalf and acquire some taste of home for you. I hope you uh, enjoy our selection. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it really smells delicious. Can't wait. Thank you. Good. Good. Very nostalgic smell and taste. I am one for nostalgia myself. In fact, as I sit here, looking at the two brothers, what, pray tell, is your last name? What is your family name? The name of your father? The name of your grandfather? And now his Ooh. eyes are like firmly darting between like Seth <laughs> and Douglas Mild, and Seth Mild and Douglas. Wood. Mildwood. Hey, famous Amos. Hey, Mildwood. Great grand happy Amos. Uh, is this a long and established family name? From where you come from, is it one that has endured? Yes. Uh, yes. We aren't yes. exactly a terribly popular name, no, but we we get by. <sighs> there is something familiar about you. I I cannot seem to place my how do you say my finger on it. Yeah, nonetheless, it will come to me. I never forget. Hmm. Or did you enjoy the grapes that were in the salad? Mm, they were delightful. Good. They are used to cultivate a very good wine that is brewed here at a local vineyard. Have you perhaps had chance to venture further afield than Volaki? Well, where, where have you visited since you have been here? Um, I would ask this of you, Mr. Douglas. Yes. Where else have you visited? What sights have you seen here in my beautiful lands? As I say, the, the grapes were from a local vineyard. I wonder yes. if you'd perhaps had chance to visit it or set eyes upon it. Um... I... Yeah, uh, we've uh, been there. Uh, they were they were doing a, a tasting. Um, we stopped by to check it out. Um, mm. I understand that they had not been doing so well of late. Well, no. You see, once upon a time, three three strong vintages flew from this clay, beautiful and robust vineyard. Oh, but then the grapes that produce the Champagne de la Stomp ceased to flourish. And then, more recently, the second vintage. And I heard a vicious rumor that fortunately turned out to be a falsehood. That, indeed, the third vintage had met some kind of blight. And while I trusted those that gave me this information, I am happy to realize that it is not true. The word from Valaki is that the third vintage is being produced once again. This is a very fortunate thing. Yes, um, it's pretty good stuff, so very happy for them. Good. Uh, well, when the other guests arrive, um, 
We shall have a interlude of entertainment before continuing with our meal. Um, uh, if you have uh, any questions for your host, please feel free to ask them. I am as open as a book. Whatever you wish to know, I will happily tell you. Even if you do not wish to know it. Uh, I have a question. Yes, my dear. Maybe kind of answered it, but why do you not visit Valaki anymore? It bores me. That's it? <sighs> yes, until very recently, the local ruler there had everything in a rather monotonous, drab routine mm -hmm. that does not interest me. I have ruled for uh, some time. See. And I do not care to witness the same thing day after day after dressed day. There is any way we could assuage that dread. Ah, but you are doing it now by entering ah. my castle and entertaining me. Speaking of entertaining, to be honest, w will you be performing again? Um, that song you were playing when we came in was. Oh, standard. I am I... sure I can find it in me to play something else for you a little later. After all, entertainment is on the menu for all of us tonight. And I hope that, given an opportunity, you will be able to entertain me as well. I dream of nothing more. The Lord Chip. Uh, I'm gonna rifle for, through my book and try and find a song that I've written that's good enough for him. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this moment, through the door, a young man enters. He is impeccably dressed, on par with Strahd himself. Um, he walks with an air of utter confidence um, and very aware self-consciousness. He has one hand out to the side, like some kind of dilettante, while the other is at his other side but low as he literally sashays and sways into the room <laughs> with that strad kind of scowls and then you see him kind of relax his harsh look for a moment he says asher you are early ah yes my lord i could not find it within myself to stay away any longer I, I see our guests have arrived. A good day, or should I say, evening to each and every one of you. He comes over and uh, stands next to Seth. I, I, I turn awkwardly in my chair, creaks. And he offers like a limp <laughs> hand to shake. <laughs> I, 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 I offer my own hand and shake it as... Okay. Awkwardly as I can, because it's kind of limp, you said, like a little... Yeah, it's kind of, you know, a little, like... little foppish, yeah. Yeah, so I <laughs> grab it and kind of shake it harder than probably I should. This is... Uh, nice, nice to meet you, sir. I am Asher. And what is your name, sir? Uh, uh, Seth. Seth Mildwood. It is a pleasure to meet you, Seth. We have been waiting for you to arrive for some time now. Uh my family and i'm gonna kind of gesture behind me to everybody waiting for us oh but of course the castle has been buzzing with the news that new visitors had come and that we would have time to spend with them oh well then then, then tonight will be a, a great night a indeed indeed with that he moves over and this individual favors you somewhat, Seth. Who is this? 
What is your name, sir? As he offers Douglas the same kind of foppish hand. Hello, uh, Douglas. Uh, Mildwood. Uh, yes, relation. Um, this is my brother. It is a pleasure to meet you also. Yes, you, you too. I give him my hand. Okay, then he goes oddly around the table, ignoring Gemma completely, mm. <laughs> and mm. goes all the way round to where Octavius is sitting. He says, This is the one. I have been so eager to meet you, young man. I am Esha. And you are? Um, I am okay. Octavius Excellente. Why, um, why have you been so excited to meet me in particular? <gasps> the rumors and stories that have already spread about your valiance, your heroic nature. My immortality, yes. I see it's starting to take hold in these lands. I guess it was inevitable, only a matter of time. Okay. <laughs> um, everybody except you, um, if you will, everybody else give me a perception skill. Oh, roll. no, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Uh-oh. <laughs> please roll high. Someone roll high, please. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Natural it's 20! It's long time <laughs> It was a skill check, so it makes set, sense. Set, set, set. <laughs> Welcome to five. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so, pretty much... Uh, let's see. Seth, Trip, and Douglas. Um, as your eyes kind of like, obviously are fixated purely on what's going on with the young boy and this new interesting character. Um, you all notice that Strahd has kind of like... His left hand has gripped one of the knives and it's like... It's bent almost in half. And you can see like his knuckles are gripping it and the, the, the metal is just like... Almost like snapping a twig. It's just going... But his face has remained somewhat stoic this entire time. Seeing that and knowing that he's being... Um, discourteous, I'm going to be like, Oh, um... Very good lord. Could he... He'll be joining us for dinner. We will see. <laughs> and Escher kind of like looks at him and like... With a... Almost disrespectful grin. He says, I will be joining you for dinner. And your name is? It's a pleasure. So, your name is Pleasure. No, Trip. I said Trip. It's a pleasure. <laughs> oh, I do apologize. I did not quite hear it. The oh, I'm standing. My that, would be, that would be a good stage name. I might take that. I must admire your dress, sir. Oh, thank you. It's um. It is a we pleasure. We brought our way to, to a wedding, after all. <laughs> well, uh, we must exchange conversation later about the latest fashions of the lands you hail from. Oh, good. Sounds wonderful, actually. Yes. And then, with a completely over-the-top gesture, he kind of like turns and acts as like if for the first time of the evening his eyes have fallen on Gemma as he goes <gasps> and then he's both of his hands like drop to the table almost as if he falls forward faint <gasps> oh. even though it would be a much shorter trip around the side and behind Strahd he takes the long way around <laughs> <laughs> and getting to Gemma's chair he bows very very low and then proceeds to get down to one single knee 
Dear madame, may I? As he extends a hand, as if he's asking for your hand. Uh, okay. Okay, he grabs it right, like, almost like a snake striking out at something, and like, with a very firm grip, it's like, latches onto it. And then he's like, and he kisses you on the back of the hand. <laughs> um, it is incredibly Thank cold you. and clammy when he does so. Okay. He Thank says, you. <laughs> Your beauty, it astounds me. Oh. Uh, yes. This you. castle has oh. not endured such beauty in such a long time. And as he says that, he's looking straight at Strahd, and you can see Strahd is like oh. glaring at him um, without any need for a perception skill roll. You can see Strahd's bottom lip is like quivering. Like at any minute he wants to like lose his proverbial shit, but he is not. He is staying calm and <laughs> he says yes Asher you have made your introductions take your seat yeah take oh, your Lord. seat and then he moves and sits down next to Octavius <laughs> Douglas puffs up a lot more and tries to block as much of Gemma as possible <laughs> So will you just stay here, right, right by me? He's sitting there like this, going. I'm leaning. I'm leaning into his gaze, <laughs> so that you're blocking <laughs> the view between him and Gemma. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, with that, you all hear a very faint, like feminine laughter down the hallway. What the what? We high. Girl. And briefly after that. <laughs> We both think the same thing at the same time, Gemma. Both Octavius and Gemma. Girl? Girl? <laughs> Three incredibly attractive oh. women all walk in. Oh, do we recognize them? Strahd at this point stands up. Yahtzee. Yeah, I'll mirror that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll stand up too. Douglas Cheers. gets up as well. Okay. Scraping the floor. Octavius stands up on his chair, so he's a little bit taller than he normally would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... right. They all just kind of like walk a few steps in, almost in perfect unison, and each one of them curtsies at the exact same time. As if on cue, about. Rahadin moves in behind them um, with a decanter of red wine um, and pours glasses for Escher, the three new guests, and goes up and tops up Strads as well. With that point, he looks at each of you and says, And more champagne for the rest of you? Or perhaps you would also like red wine. The champagne is a nice change of pace. It is very rare here. Yes, more Indeed. champagne. More please champagne enjoy. for me too, please. I think okay. water would be good. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> he's pouring champagne into every glass regardless. <laughs> Thank, thank you. Uh, the champagne. The champagne. <laughs> champagne de stomp. <laughs> okay. Um, with that, Strad says, May I present my courtesans? This is Ludmilla Vilicevic. Um, Lud Ludmilla kind of. Um, let's see where is she. Gotta get my. Gotta remember which one's which. I had them in order and now I've moved them and now I don't know. <laughs> That's it, this one. Right, the one here on the end curtsies. Um, she is lighter skinned than the others. There's a firm curtsy and says, Oh, it is an absolute pleasure to meet all of you. I understand you're from Arconis, is that right? I'm not from these lands either. You don't mind if I sit next to you, do you, Asher? 
and he kind of like nonchalantly flips his hand in the air like what the fuck do I care uh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says this is Valenta Pobovsky she is dressed a little plainer than the others and has this kind of like interesting look on her face without saying anything she just goes and then goes as if she was going to sit down at the end table but then stops and thinks oh maybe not and then she moves in and gets awkwardly close to Seth Mildwood <laughs> noticeably pulling her chair over a couple of inches so that her the arm of her chair is touching the arm of your chair Oh, yeah. I, I set does this fat man lean to Douglas's <laughs> side. You know, you know, like when you're in the chair, that's a little uncomfortable because you're uncomfortable. You just kind of like shift your own weight, your one butt cheek. That's what I'm doing toot right lean. now. Okay. Lean and toot. <laughs> yeah, the lean and toot. Yeah. The lean and toot. Sneak cheek. Yeah. And then he says, Sneak cheek. And finally, of course, my dear, Anastasia Karilova. And she just kind of like does a very polite curtsy and tilts her head. Um, pulls out the chair and then says, Hmm, I would have thought one of you strong men would have had the manners to pull the chairs out for such three delicate ladies. Gore. <laughs> the speed and awkwardness at which Octavius <laughs> leaps off of the chair he's standing on to try to get to the nearest girl to pull their chair out is something, a swiftness you've never seen from him previous. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you're like going to anticipate that and kind of dive to do it? As soon as she even starts talking and I know what she's about to say, I am just, I <laughs> am fumbling over myself to try to get to one of them. Okay. So basically the other two have already sat down, but she has just started to pull the chair out. So you like dive in, grab the chair, please pull it out. And then she like, ah, it is refreshing to see one true gentleman amongst you. Apologies, Anastasia. It is different from where we hail. Uh, ever since that Lady Kiliana was so adamant about people not pulling out chairs for her. <laughs> yes. Kiliana. And who is she? Some form of queen? Um, not quite a queen, though she, she might is, say uh, otherwise. a sorceress and lady of Arconis. <laughs> sorceress <Yeah>. supreme. <laughs> sorceress <laughs> supreme. How very common. Mm. Uh, at which point, regard. at which point, Escher goes, the commonality seems to be uh, rather common here, doesn't it? At which Astra um, Anastasia kind of like turns and glowers at him. And just for a brief second, her face almost becomes ugly. At which point, Strad says, ah, and just raises one hand. And immediately, they're like, cower back into their chairs. He says, let us not worry about your personal squabbles this evening. After all, you speak of politeness and manners, and yet here are our humble guests. Let us put these unpleasant things aside just for tonight. And with that, Anastasia kind of smiles politely and tilts. Usher is like, <sighs> clearly acts with no respect, which everybody else has. Um, Lude Miller just kind of smiles politely and nods and um Valenta is doing this at the side of Seth's head <laughs> is she looking at Seth? yes like, like, oh, at the, like you're sitting here awkward and she, you, her eyes are just glued on you like I, I have turned my head and go uh, <laughs> like an awkward little with a tiny wave don't know how to deal with such strong <laughs> staring. Jack, when you turn your head sideways, your bald cap is absolutely hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. No. 
I, I'm well aware. <laughs> That's why I gotta keep staring straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh. At this point, Escher looks at everybody's plates and says, so "How are you enjoying the dead fish?" <clears throat> is that is that a Barovian thing that we haven't experienced? Uh, do you normally eat your fish living? Hmm. I don't eat fish at all. Slimy wretched creatures that swim around in the water. Oh. Very cold so home, blooded. Hmm. No, at home this is um a very familiar dish. We have it pretty often actually. Good. Which is why I opted the quail. Um, I hope you are enjoying your meal that has been provided for you. There are still more courses to come, but it is customary to pause. Give your stomach time to, how would you say, find room. So perhaps some entertainment would be good. Yes, um... Before you arrived, my um, my courtesans, uh, they were regaling us of their tales that they have ventured through Barovia. They mentioned that they had been to the accursed village below the castle. They had found their way to Valaki. And they had ventured to the vineyards. Um, uh, please, um, would one of you like to continue your story. Where else have you been? What else have you visited? What other lofty heights might you have ascended to while you are here? Oh, um, we, uh, we traveled up the mountains, uh, and defeated a giant bird. Oh, was this bird causing you trouble? Causing a fellow traveler of grief. Uh, we wanted very much to destroy it, and we offered our help. And as heroes, you valiantly defended the traveler. This we gave good. him what he wanted, yes. There is unfortunately something to learn about being heroes here in Barovia. The only thing the miserable love more than a hero is to see and witness a hero fail. After all, when someone that looks and acts as a hero meets failure and demise, it reassures them that their miserable acceptance is no worse than anybody else's. Uh, please enjoy your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I <can't> continue eating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the courtesans are just sitting there, very quietly sipping on wine at this point. Um, Escher at that point says, "Anastasia, look at the beauty at the end of the table. Isn't she exquisite?" Isn't she gorgeous? The most delicate and beautiful thing in the room, I would dare say. And with that, you can kind of see Anik Starge's right eye is just like twitching. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh, She is indeed delightful, if you like that sort of thing. Um, most people have called me understated throughout my life. Yes, me as well. I say that. She's very understated and not of any concern. It's more my brains that are the beauty here. Okay, Lu with, uh, when you say that, Ludmilla says, Really? You consider yourself intelligent? Is that right? <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. I oh, have to wonderful. Myself to study. Yes, I myself have had um, countless years of <laughs> in depth study in my past. Um,. Perhaps at some point this evening we'll have the chance to have a game of wits. Wouldn't that be delightful? Oh, I would love to see that. <laughs> a game of wits. <laughs> Countless. I'm only 19, so. 
Oh, but then, oh, my dear child, how possible? How me. smart can you possibly be? <laughs> Not for a nineteen-year-old's gifted. But... Ah, so for clarification, you are intelligent for a nineteen-year-old. Yes. What is happening right now? <laughs> um, I think she's already waiting you. With that, Anastasia <laughs> is grinning like eagerly, like with her eyes glistening, like she's about to watch a cat fight unfold. <laughs> <laughs> um, Valenta is still looking at Seth. They say the What's older it? you get, the more your mind goes. Oh, whoa, oh. Whoa. Uh, who is it that says that? The old. Are the children that you play with? <laughs> no, I would never say that about thine, thine lady. <laughs> Yeah. I just play with my kid brother over there. What? Just brother's fine. <laughs> um, with that, Strad says, You know you must keep the rest of your family in line. You know who you are. He looks at all of you, but then leans back in the chair knowingly. Oh, I think I get it. Oh, how fun. He says, Before the entertainment turn to be uh, less than savory, I recently heard a poem. One that, if it would entice you, I would happily, happily recite for you here this evening. Escher's like, <sighs> like, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go. Um, clearly not a fan of what's about to go down. <laughs> At which point, Strahd stands up, poses himself as if looking at a muse in the sky that doesn't exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is a good quote, Gore. And then... I love that. <laughs> he kind of says, this verse came to me. Originally, they say, it was in form of song. Alas, he who told me the words could not recall the melody. But I made him tell me the story, the song, over and over and over again until I committed all to memory. Once you had courage beyond any brave. Now wretched and shadows you sit here and wait. Drowning in hatred but staying your blade. Fading and losing your fate. What then, good heroes, you never rest? Grudges unsettled and scorns unaddressed. Fear you no monster, no fear you no death, in the shameful corpse which you addressed. Honored in life, now cursed to the grave, restless and wicked, in vengeance and vain, could you have mercy and wrath all the same, great knight of the silver flame? Good silver dragon, who haunts like a wind, Justice unanswered now rests here with him. Shine in his eyes, with your glimmer, god kin, And awaken the hope there within. Monsters in castles where suns never rise, Awaiting swift justice, if you so decide, and take back your treasure, the tyrant's great prize. Free your lord of his demise. Strad, he is pleased, he is trapped but a god, laughing at all those who toil in his sod. Call him the ancient, or cast now your lot, else all hope would stay here forgot. Honored in life, now cursed to the grave, Restless and wicked, in vengeance and vain, Could you have mercy and wrath all the same, Great knight 
of the silver flame. This verse moved me. It is one that has haunted my dreams. Oh, but a few nights ago was it recanted to me. I wish I had the talents or the skills or the knowledge to truly understand the verse. But I think I understand some of it. It seems to be an ode almost to a dragon of silverness, a silver dragon. Uh, perhaps in your travels you have heard of such a thing. I. I was haunted by this verse. Oh, what I would take to meet somebody with such talent as to compose such verses. Have any of you perhaps heard this recanted before? I was actually going to ask if I could take it down. No, it's beautiful. This is yeah. indeed it was. Of course, there were some inaccuracies, but no doubt they were spurred on by vicious rumor and wickedness. But the truth behind the glory of the silver dragons rings true. So it's real? Uh, parts, of course. Well, well, just silver dragons, that was more... There was a holy order of, of lost knights. Unfortunately, they fell out of grace. But there was one, the leader of this group, that they called the Silver Dragon. I am sure that that is something to do with the verse. Uh-huh. Uh, some parts seemed confusing to me, the parts that referred to me and the great prizes and things like this. But, uh, as we know, there is metaphor to be found in all kinds of performance. Sounds very familiar to me. Really? Perhaps you could jog your memory and see if you can recall where. After all, as I said, I believe it originated in song, but the person that informed me of this was only capable of uttering the words, not the melody. Hmm. No? I have to let my brother... Uh think on that one. I it could have been the bard. The lucky could have been it was... someone else. No, but he was also a poet. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier this evening that you were a bard. Is that not true, young Trip? That was me. Uh, I... <laughs> By shame, yes, I am in fact a bard. Well, I am glad that we have somebody here of such culture. Um, tell me, do you regale stories, sing song, dance, poetry? What is your talent? You do not want to see me dance, Lord Strahd. Well, perhaps you might, but I will lean more champagne to the song. Uh, please, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> um, I jest. Uh, I, am, I am a bard of song, which is a terrible coincidence there. You said it had a melody. It did indeed, yes. Did you ever want to hear a melody like that? I might be able to think something up. Uh, that is, again, uh, if you wouldn't mind. I have a... Well, and he kind of like looks to the organ behind him and says, ah, I doubt you have had the opportunity to play such a thing. And then he points further over to the left. He says, but a more simple, more a common... Piano is available if you wish to play it. I believe we found one of those at the Durst Estate. I'm fond of them. Oh, by all means. If the mood takes you this evening, uh, maybe you can sing us a song. And Eshel, perhaps you will dance for us. <laughs> oh, he's a dancer. That would explain it. Uh, Eshel is many things. It says... Yes, yes I am. Many things. <laughs> Capable of many talents. 
And he swigs another gla- another gobble of his <laughs> of his red wine. I like their dynamic. They're all, they're they're just like us. They are just like us. <laughs> <laughs> they're all equal. Yeah, you are all equally um, <laughs> um dysfunctional as a family. <laughs> um. Yep, he uh, kind of like looks to see how everybody's doing on the food, um, assuming most of it has been dealt with. Um, mm-hmm. He will pick up his little gold bell and ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling, ring it once more. <laughs> and with that... Rahadeen comes sweeping in once more. He smiles politely at all the new guests and then looks at you and says, Now I bring you the cheese selection. We have Mindenbrook Brie, Corathan Cheddar, Skeinbrook Goat's Cheese, Sedorian Gouda, and Erosian Camel Bear. And then he puts the platter down on the table. Um, various different types of cracker from corn to wheat to you name it. Very small little miniature breads. Um, little brioche and all that sort of stuff. All scattered around the, ver- the variety of cheeses. He says, all of these cheeses were um, sourced from either your lands... Or other lands, not too far from where you are from. Sidoria is quite a hike, however. The Gouda is exciting for me. He says, I <laughs> particularly like the Erosian Camel Bear. Oh, but that has that tang to it. It is the <laughs> tang that I appreciate the most. Have a bite of each. Please enjoy yeah. and whoosh off he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. He's evil. <laughs> okay. As you continue to eat, Strad says So we have a musical interlude to look forward to from Trip Mildwood. We have some um dancing from Escher. Ludmilla, my dear. Would you care to dance for us also? If that is your pleasure. And what about the rest of you? Do any of you have anything you wish to do? Anything that you would like to offer up as entertainment on this fine evening? Uh, sure, perhaps a small joke. Ah, humor. I am fond of such things. Please. Be wary. Tell us your be wa- joke. Be wary, be wary, Straw. Gemma's jokes are a joke in their own. Uh, my joke is how do you tell uh, one is a bard out of a group of adventurers? Oh, I know this. Oh, God, don't do it. Um, Asher says he'll be the one trying to be more self important than everybody else. At that point, Strahd kind of says, Asher! You are past your bedtime. I think it is time for you to retire. He kind of looks at Strahd and scowls and says, Hmm, I see. Fine. You have found yourself another plaything. I'll leave. It does not matter to me. After all, this group bores me. And then he says, It is by any jest to my expense, I wouldn't. Wouldn't wish him him to retire so on is my just account. Like, Escher's manners have been considerably out of place this evening. It is best he go and purge himself of his current demeanor. Hmm. Kind of like when we have to put this one in a little a little time out, and I'm gonna <laughs> point at <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a slight time out, that's all. But you're mean. You're so <laughs> mean! <laughs> oh 
but it is all too familiar. Okay, so um, once Escher is firmly left, you notice that the... Dane, where did you get crackers from? <laughs> See where the three um, <laughs> women are all watching. Um, Valenta has not changed her demeanor. She is still staring at the side of um, My Seth's boss, head. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. at this point that you notice that she hasn't actually blinked a single time either. It is, like, really uh... somewhat disturbing. <laughs> um, Ludmilla and Estrasia seem highly entertained by Escher being thrown out and sent to bed without supper. <laughs> and um, with that, Estrasia says, Now, the bad humors that were in the room have left. I trust the rest of the evening to be far more pleasant. Back to the joke. <laughs> Please, tell us this joke, and I deeply apologize on Escher's behalf. And on behalf of myself, for I feel somewhat embarrassed of his outburst. We will have absolute silence while Gemma tells her joke. Oh, please. I'll uh, start from the beginning then. Um, <clears throat> so, how do you tell uh, who the bard is out of a group of adventurers? Anybody? Anybody? But yes, Octavius. Can I say it if I know it? No, that's my joke. <laughs> Okay, then why'd you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're supposed to guess the wrong answer. Oh, um, gotta work on that part, oh, sweetheart. Right. Uh, because it it's clear. Uh, because they'll be dressed in a beautiful, luxurious coat. Uh, no. Oh. Oh. Wrong answer. Dang. Oh shucks. Oh. Uh, the correct answer is you don't have to look because they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 so oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. I love when she tells that one. Good cheese. Good cheese. I was going to say it's the pile of bodies that we behind, but no. <laughs> as soon as he starts laughing, the three, should I say two, ladies start <laughs> like playing along. Um, Valenta also laughs. <laughs> and she continues to, le to leer at oh Seth's ear. She says, ah, So, it, may I make some suggestions that you may take with you this evening. And the joke, sure. Oh, um, not the joke. Oh. But perhaps, um, if you are fond of traipsing up mountains to see and kill giant birds, there is some delightful ruins that you can find. Um, ones that might bring relevance and um, an understanding to the poem that I read to you earlier. So you might find that of interest. Uh, have you met any of my Vistani brethren since you have been here? Any that would stand out? Any of note? We, we came on a Vistani camp at one point and passed through. Don't know if anyone stands out. Uh, Why well, they are of use to me, they cannot be trusted by average folk. They tend to lie a lot. They are full of deception and subterfuge. They like to spread rumors and sow the seeds of dissent. It is almost a hobby for them. I would take anything that you hear from any of them with a grain of salt. 
Um, but they are also very entertaining, musical people that also love to dance. So, as long as you bear that in mind and keep your wits about you, their company can have its benefits. Their company is exactly what brought us here today. Is it? <laughs> uh, we had not our wits about us, and a uh, wedding dress we were en route to a wedding to deliver was um snatched up by one whom we followed through this mist which brought us to your lovely lands as they are. Ah, how fortunate for me that you stumbled across my domain. Glad to be of service, my lord. Yes, that I trust you are I've... not in any great rush to leave. Um, uh, After not all, if you leave, are, not I to leave can... Barovia, but I have had perhaps a bit on the, on the level of libations and do require a privy. If I could be shuddered, please, for a minute, Gore. <laughs> yes, we can, <laughs> we, we can shudder you for a minute. Um, and it, look, I think we actually, uh, uh, I think a yeah. few people do, so we're going to take D a Dougie very short break. Dougie uh, also needs <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take a short need break. To, like, the wizard, you know? <laughs> so after the joke, um, <laughs> and after his travel suggestions for sightseeing, um, he looks across the table at the three partisans. And says, Ludmilla, you have a voice that is still strong in your native accent. Do you recognize the dialect of which our guests speak? And she says, well, not exactly. After all, they said that they are from Arconus. I've never ventured there. Um, I came from a... I believe a similar place, but not quite the same. Um, I come from a land known as Faerun. She says, ah, and is this across the ocean from Arconus? She says, ah, not entirely sure, to be honest. And then he looks I... and says to Trip, you are a bard, one that is frequent taverns and listens to tales. Do you have anything you could shed on this? I would have to ask my character sheet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Not sure uh, if I've got a, I don't know how good my history uh, skill is. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. I have a 15 passive history. Right. But uh, I would say that... you could make a roll um, but fifteen, yeah. a passive fifteen for this wouldn't be enough. Let's try. No. Uh, no. Uh, you have, n <laughs> if at most you may have heard the name in passing, but probably know little to nothing about it. Yeah, I'll I'll kind of le play on the perplexness there. Then um, I've heard of Faerun. I haven't been nor really heard much of Faerun. Um. Not sure how to get there either. Not from where I'm from, at least. He says, Strange thing, the planes. Hmm. Perhaps you should visit one day and broaden your horizons. After all, you don't intend to stay here in Barovia forever, do you? Well, we did purchase a house in the lock years. So you intend to stay? Ah, that makes me happy. Trouble really does come down to we've left our mother behind. This is uh you lived near uh, the town of well, the city of Corathan, is that correct? Nearby it, yes, it's um the south eastern prefecture there. I see. Yes, uh I do believe it is uh a pleasant green land that you are from. I particularly uh, instructed... It's really wet. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, um, I had instructed my purveyors that were sent out to acquire the foods 
to pay particular attention to the region that you came from, to be sure we uh, source the best food. I trust from what he and from what I heard that um your simple home is intact. Does that bring you comfort? It does. But I've been... Who dwells within the home? I am told a middle aged woman was there, but they were instructed not to get too close or reveal themselves for fear of startling the poor lady. It's um, not her startlement you need to fear. <laughs> uh, but for what I understand, mm. she is at this time very well. Like, very well? Like, happier? Very happy? Uh, he, they did not say they did not get that close. Only just to check to make sure she was still breathing. She's... Well, for that information, I am at your debt. Oh, not at all. It was the least I could do, have somebody check on your uh, relatives for you. Kindness is a kindness, however. Speaking of relatives, this is still aggravating me. That there's something about you. You two brothers, something so familiar, it's, oh, I wonder what it could be. Ah, well, pay I, it no mind. I mean, we do look alike brothers, makes sense. Yes, but I could have sworn I have seen you before, but this could not be possible, could it? No, I... Tandawin, Corthan... Home, Scarrow. Stay in that area, you know? Yes. In Narconis, so... You had never been to Barovia before. No, 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 no not at no, all. No, of course, no. Hmm. Oh, it matters not. It will come to me eventually. And when it does, I, I'm sure I'll remember all the details at that point. Ah, but I digress. More entertainment, more merriment. Things have seem to have gotten a little quiet and dour. Um, perhaps you would like to play for us now, Trip. Oh, um, actually, um, if you, if you don't mind, I would. Please uh, help yourself to the piano. It is old, but still remains in tune. I was not about to figure this one out, and I'm going to look at the uh, organ. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then I'm going to work my way over to the piano. Um, look at everybody for a second and just be like, um... With that, this... Ludmilla kind of gets up out of her chair and comes and stands next to the piano, just kind of like putting one hand on the edge of it. Um, Malcolm this song Malcolm. is about the people of Barovia and, um, the, uh, well, some of them just stand out, don't they? And, um, and I'm going to turn around and play it. It actually I might be able to make this work. I, hold on. You 
you've seen her, haven't you? Unwilling to bow, who is she anyhow? To be perfect, unsightly, so true. Something new. What is a lord to do? With such that his lands would need his sturdy hands and no time for admiring the view. What a view! She's the sun which shines without searing the shadows. She's the one who leaves the night behind when she's gone. A vital heart sits at your foot, black and billow. Has it been so long we've seen her? We know her, she's cursing your dreams. Oh, we know her well, trust just another of your many things. You haven't a next life to claim her in past. Oh, patient Lord, could you at last hold her fast? Brazen and bold, blazing but cold. Okay, um, upon hearing that, like, halfway through the song, <laughs> Anna start, uh, um, uh, sorry, Ludmilla stopped dancing and just kind of, like, went all still, and, like, was just looking at Strahd. Um, the rest of you noticed that about halfway through, a small blood-red tear began to drift down his cheek which he was very quick to wipe away with his handkerchief. Um, the rest of the song, he stared, like, just at the table, like, void of emotion. Um, and by the time the, the music has stopped, he has not moved at all. He's just, like, glaring at the table. Uh, great job. Uh, great job, Trip. I'll um, just stand up and do it. Very, very nice. All right. Um, <laughs> Ludmilla very awkwardly comes and try without making any sound whatsoever to sit herself very casually back down in the chair. And she is now okay. looking at um, Anastasia, who like looks at her and then just goes, like shakes her head, like whatever you're gonna do, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna follow suit. Um, if there was <laughs> moments of awkward silence at any point tonight, this is without a doubt the most awkward. <laughs> I don't understand. Did they? Did you not like it or what? I'm going to kind of put my hand. With that, he lifts his head up, and then you it's see him kind of like life. compose himself mentally for a second, and he looks over. He kind of turns in his chair. And says, that was a masterful piece of work. I commend oh. you for it. Please. I trust this will not be the last time you come to visit me. I can see us having many, many more evenings of silently understanding one another. Sometimes words are best unspoken. And sometimes messages delivered in the dark are more appropriate. I have enjoyed you all this evening. Therefore, I feel only fair to give you a portent much like you were found from some of my Festani, I too share the gift of foretelling. One of you will betray the others. You know who you are. The messages in the night, the quiet, solitary moments, 
when you step away from the rest of your family. It will all become apparent to them soon enough, so you must decide. ding a ling a ling a ling, -a -ling. <laughs> <laughs> And in comes Mr. Rahadin once more um, with his delectable delights. Um, as he comes in and says, Here is dessert. A silken Cassanian chocolate mousse. And he puts a massive bowl like... It's, it's kind of like fairly shallow, but it's about this big around with very small little sil um, silvery looking spoons. And he puts one in front of each of you. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> uh, you see, um, at this point, you see kind of... Uh, Ludmilla looking at the chocolate mousse longingly. <sighs> I remember such flavors. Like my the chocolate I've... that you can acquire from Cassania is quite literally to die for. Was there not a war over that? Oh, there have been many wars. I've heard rumor that from all the lands and all the chocolate, Cassania was the best. Yet, living in the realm I lived, I never got to taste it. And unfortunately now, even though it is right here in front of me, I am no longer... um. I am intolerant of such rich things now, I'm afraid. It would only upset my stomach. Yes, you have a bad case of the dairy drips. Mm. Long COVID <laughs> got the best of us, yeah. <laughs> the dairy drips. Yes. I understand the real reason. Uh, yes. Uh, did you enjoy the sculptors that you saw when you entered into my castle? They are a bit macabre, nonetheless, um, but fine etchings of gargoyles and dragons can be seen in the rafters. A uh, Baroque influence, were they not? Uh, they are of eh, superstition. It was believed in the days of the ancient times that it was good luck and um, a form of protection to have such creatures carved into the walls. Yes, Makes antiquities. Of the castle. Um, we can arrange such a thing of parts of the castle. This castle is very, very old. And there are parts of it that are um, unsafe. In fact, most of it is hazardous do your health if you do not know where to step. Perhaps at some point I will have Rahadin give you a brief and safe tour. Are you interested in such things? I have yes. an exceptional library. If that is of yes. curiosity to you. I would... I would be honored to read through some of the books in your life. You like to read? I am an avid reader. Good, good. Tell me, have you read any interesting books lately? The problem is there's not many books that I've come across here uh, in Barovia. Not many people have libraries only some of the nobility but every great once in a while you may stumble across a book or tome in the most unexpected places it was the one in um in that dust house that we that we visited briefly it was in the durst manor on the outskirts of the village um yes we were there um 
found an odd little book of, uh, I think it was Master Dus's personal spell book if he dabbled. Ah, uh, the arcane witchcraft and the black magic. It has no place here in Barovia. Only wholesome and pure magic has place here. You consider wholesome magic? Oh, the kind that brings joy to people, makes life better, kills the sick, and mends the broken. Do you do that? I have not much call to leave the castle, but I have some skill. After all, when any of us here should get hurt, I ensure that they have the means to heal themselves quickly and efficiently. Well, should you stumble across any interesting books that you think I should be aware of, I would very much like to encourage you to bring them to me. Are you just looking for a bit to read? Mm, I have an extensive library. You would know if you found something that I would find of uh, great curiosity. Sure. And should you stumble across any great interesting artifacts, anything of antiquity from the past, something of esoteric value or even... Just historic interest. Any strange and superstitious symbols that you might fall upon. Anything odd of curiousness. I would like to know about these things too. After all, sometimes being in possession of such things can make you a target for some very unpleasant people. Bad things can happen. As I said, the Vistani cannot be trusted. They are thieves, most of them. And would stab you in the back and rob you as soon as look at you. Why do you have... Uh, I'm sorry, I heard there was a deal with them. That they could yeah. leave this place. If you don't like them, why did you make a deal with them? Uh, it is not a case of like or dislike, it is a case of they are necessary. They have a lineage and uh, a bloodline that ties them to my ancestry. It is an old superstitious thing, it is silly and pointless to be honest, that would bore you, but needless to say I am forced to tolerate them, but they know their place where I am concerned. And as such, can be used as useful tools by myself. To bring people here like they did to us. You Perhaps. coming here was not of my doing. It was a what sheer, did... um, unfortunate circumstance. You may leave whenever you wish. Just exit the way you came in, through the gates. Wander into the mist, I am sure you will stumble across your homeland. But as you now have purchased a home and made a place for yourselves here, I trust you are in no rush to exit this interesting land. Right, why leave? Even though we have a mother at home who misses us. Would you like for me to arrange to have her brought here? No. Oh, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, do not worry. I will make it a personal mission of mine. Call it a favor to my new guests to keep an eye on her. Oh. Ew. <laughs> I'm sure she's fine. She, she, she is very. Yeah, she would kill Scrod. No, no problem. <laughs> Monster. She'll be fine. While she's looking after the house. 
This is, um... Well, if you are new to this land... Let us see. Do you have wealth? Do you have means to sustain your family? And give them the... Finer things? We have some gold. And enough to get by. I myself am abundantly wealthy. I do not say this to brag, only to point out that when you have enough, you have enough. Should you find anything of particular interest to me, I am very fond of um, old religions. I collect religious artifacts. Should one of you stumble across such a thing and bring it to me, I would reward you most handsomely. But then, one of you already knows this. Have you a reliquary? I do. Of course. Castle such as this. Albeit that it is now really set foot upon. The doors have not been opened in a long time. My work is in the translation of history into song that those would carry forth the meanings of things past. Well, then. Beholding relics becomes music for me. Yes, then perhaps if you bring me something that can be of um, equal interest that belongs in my reliquary. I can take you there and as I thank you perhaps give you the opportunity to study them. Please, I would also offer a personal invitation to you yourself, young Trip, to visit my castle any time you wish. Any time at all, day or night. Apologies, in Barovia, it's not too much a difference. Nice. You are, of course, correct. The weather is drab and miserable all the time. Oh, if only the sun would shine once in a while. But alas. It will not, cannot, shall not. Oh my goodness, chocolate, chocolate mousse. So, um, I haven't <laughs> had this since I was a child. No. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, enjoy your dessert. We have one final course for you, for each of you. Um, what dessert is ding, 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 ding. Well, And then walks Brahadin with His dog. another decanter <laughs> of liquid. Sir? He says, this is a digestive. It is a sweet red wine. Yes. That you will use to cleanse your palate and finish off the meal. Please do not find the odd taste too disturbing. It has a sweetness that is more vibrant than perhaps even the chocolate dessert that you have just enjoyed. like to keep the chocolate taste in my mouth and with that he pours little tiny glasses like little mini little, almost like little mini wine glasses sherry glasses with a very thick red liquid and sits them in front of each of you um he then like turns around quickly noticing that the stool has been moved and puts the stool back exactly where it belongs and then after that, he spins around yet again and says, oh, my apologies. 
And then he pours a little for the three courtesans and a little for Strahd as well. Enjoy! And off he goes. <laughs> Strahd picks up the tiny glass and holds it, as do the three courtesans. And he looks at each of you in anticipation. Okay, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, is anybody not picking up the little glass of red liquid? That's the first question. <laughs> we are. Nope. Okay, so everybody picks it up. He I'm says, "Picking it up." Yeah. 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 Um, that will be the second question. <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> you tell me if you're actually sipping it or not. Okay. He says, "To new friends and long-lasting relationships." To the truth that should always be spoken. No lies should cross our lips when talking to friends. Trust me when I say, lies once again are for the weak. And many truths have been revealed here tonight, whether spoken or ascertained by other means. Salo. And he swigs it down and finishes the glass, as do the other three. And then they're all like... So it's blood, right? It's a thick red liquid. Um, I'm going to fake sip it. Okay, yeah, you fake it. sip it and put it down. Yeah, I was going to say, Octavius would fix it, but not because he thinks it's blood or anything, but just he doesn't want to drink red wine. He's a kid. He's not going to like it, so he's going to act cool in front of the in front of the, 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 the women okay. there. Um, but I, anybody I so, sipping yeah. any of it? No? no? <laughs> uh, Seth would. Okay. Because he's tasted blood before oh, yeah. his own. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't want he's to blood offend. On his lip. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's he's been cut. He's tasted his own blood. He's done the so Bruce Lee. He's yeah. just going to soldier through, <laughs> knowing full well probably what it is. Okay, but not wanting to offend anybody. Yeah. All right. So it like probably Seth tastes put a little irony. bit up to his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I can chug it, but it is kind of thick. It definitely has the consistency of blood. Yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Taste that irony, though. All right, yeah. It, it kind of leaves it. you with a really weird feeling, like, sure, is it? Was it? <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. Upon <laughs> that, he says, uh, "But of course, how foolish of me!" And he claps his hands. Um, and in comes Rahadin with another decanter. He says, Can doing brandy would be more to your liking. And then he pours little glasses of brandy and puts those in front of everybody instead. Um, <laughs> and then uh, sits back. But of course, none of the three women or him have a glass of can doing brandy in front yeah. of them now. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that tracks. Ugh. Yes, I drink the brandy and swish it. <laughs> Mask swish of, whatever know, it was As down. a much own palate cleanser. Okay. <laughs> um, Take some chocolate crumbs off the plate. And <laughs> tongues my teeth. You know. <laughs> he looks at you at this point and says, I have enjoyed you. You must all come again. And you, young Trip. I trust I will see you soon. You have many visits ahead of you here at the castle. Manage. I will have my bondsman show you to the door in the coach, and I will carry you back to Valaki. I would allow you to stay the night, but unfortunately we do not have 
adequately clean rooms. And as you have a home, after all, I am sure you are eager to get back. Now, if you will excuse me. With that, the three women kind of get up. They all curtsy and head out the and head out the door. It's a pleasure to have met you, says um, Lude Miller. Anastasia curtsies and says, "Until we meet again." Valenta gets up, backs out of the room, still staring at Seth. <laughs> And as she goes out the door and out of sight, you hear her go, I've chosen. That one's mine. <laughs> um, and with that, Strahd oh, bursts into song mm. once again. He starts to lay his hands down on the keyboard and says, This evening has been most entertaining. I am glad that you came to see me. Take care, my friends. Um, Rahadin comes and says, I have been sent to collect you and bring you to the carriage. Yep, I get up. all of us. <laughs> no strangers to love. No to I'll I'll do a bow and leave. Off we go. We're getting out of here, fam. Let's get along, everyone. I'm Tim Diet. <laughs> yep, I am getting the. Fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> okay. That wasn't so bad, right? <laughs> As the music swells. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't get it. What was the big what? deal? What did you say, Octavius? I can't. I said it wasn't that bad. It was. We had good food. We had lovely company. <laughs> I suppose. I just don't understand what the big deal is. Rahadin closes the doors. Seems like a nice guy. He says, this way. Uh, Gemma, as you kind of get to where you saw the little girl last time, yeah. instinctively glancing over there, you see these big kind of brown eyes peering out of the dark halls towards you. Wave this time. <laughs> she kind of like, her head disappears back, but then you'll see like from behind the wall, a hand goes, <laughs> and then... Vanishes. <laughs> okay, Rahadin spins around to look to see what it was that you were looking at, but then when he sees nothing, he kind of scowls, takes a second look over there, and then continues to escort you down the hallway. <laughs> oh, it's cute. The cover is cute. <laughs> that's that's more appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just this way. The coach will be waiting for you outside. I'm glad that all of you made it through the evening. Without losing doors. your lunch. Miles out and free. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, let's go. And I start pushing Trip out the door. <laughs> All right. I'll oh, it's pitch in here. That's terrifying. Okay. Um,. The strange thing is, the other door does not open. For about three or four minutes, you are in utter pitch black. <laughs> and then finally, the door is opened, 
and a familiar, gnarly looking old man um, emer is like standing in the rain with the large coach sitting idly beside him. Uh, turn around, guys. Um, you're facing the door. <laughs> I trust you had a good evening. The coach will take you home. Yeah, uh, it's great. Master service. Kids, I'll hop yep. on in. Yep. I can drink the blood. <laughs> <laughs> that was blood. <laughs> no, no, no blood. <laughs> Everything's fine. End of the episode. I was, I was thinking of yeah. Oh, come on. You have so many. Okay. And with that, off the, <laughs> off the coach travels back across the drawbridge, leaving Castle Ravenloft behind and the melodious pipe organs fading into the distance. Strauss got good taste in music, I will say that. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's killer. Yeah, he's with yeah, it. He, 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 he's up on shit. <laughs> We'd hit karaoke with him for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's it. Strauss coming to, to the next party. <laughs> I'll say it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it anyway. <laughs> so, vampire. So, he is no stranger to love. <laughs> oh. You know the rules, and so do I. <laughs> Alrighty, and oh, with man, that... I want to do karaoke against a fucking vampire yeah. now. Do it! <laughs> <laughs> be done. And that is the end of the show. Okay, well, you all oh, survived oh, without man. going to shit and trying anything stupid and getting uh, killed. Yeah, but... Measure. Ah, dang nabbit. Well, time for a beer. Oh, hello there. It's me, Christy, D&D Dad. I'm here to do all the things that a good D&D Dad should do. Like mow the lawn, fix some shit, drink a beer, and of course, roll lots of 20s. And if you like all this, can you, can you pan? Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Dad. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah you look good. Yeah. You should check me out on Instagram and Twitter at uh, Christastics. And if you like D&D content, check out my podcast, New Crits on the Block. Anyway, I love you, my children. If you're seeing this, that means that I'm back to playing Mondays on Hot Reroll. My handle is Satchmo on all platforms, and if you follow me, then maybe I'll just, maybe I can... We've been trying to reach you concerning oh, your car's no! extended warranty. Nothing. Hi, is this my local zoologist? Yes, I'll hold. Hi, local zoologist. Yes, my name is Jane Ivana, and I'm looking for a snake that has a stinger. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yes. I'll hold. You don't have any? Alright, well, if you could look into it, um, you can contact me on Twitter at Jane on Twitch. That's with a zero. Anytime. Yeah, or you could, yeah, you could catch me on my Twitch streams. I stream, like, once a week on uh, twitch.tv slash Janevana. Alright, I'll hold. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, local zoologist. Hey everyone, it's the Snuggler. This year, Jane asked us to go quick on our outros, so I promise I'll go as fast as possible.
You're just gonna put all my information on text on the screen, aren't you? Son of a... Uh, hey, uh, twitch.tv slash shagget here, um, and I'm trapped in Barovia. Uh, I'm hiding in a dingy basement uh, with some art, you know, the art dingy basement, you know, nothing like what you usually see on my webcam when I do streams on how we roll. Um, and I'm not hiding from Strahd, believe it or not. He's a pushy Dracula knockoff. I, I, he doesn't scare me. I'm not afraid of him. I'm actually hiding from Gorbad, my dungeon master. Uh, he's out to kill me. I think finally surviving in 10 campaigns in Arconis throughout his stories, is he's, he's snapped because of it. And because of that, he's out to really kill me this time. Um, contact me at Neb underscore convos on Twitter, please. Um, your support will help keep me alive, keep me on the run, you know, keep my hope alive. Um, I really need to see what happens to Radavan, Emlyn, and Alekma, and all my other characters that I've played. I really need to see what happens to them. I'm very curious. Uh, oh shit, I messed up. I really messed up. Um, I think he heard me. He's coming. See ya! Hi there, I'm Gorbad, and thank you for watching How We Roll. If you'd like to keep up with us when we're not live on Twitch, you can check out our other forms of social media. Follow us on Twitter, at How We Roll. You can also follow our Facebook page. You can find the website at www.howweroll.com. And you can also find us on YouTube at, you've guessed it, How We Roll, for an absolute ton of additional content. Also, you can follow the dmblog.com for some DM tips, world building guides, and all things D&D related. Cheers, guys. <sighs> that was a long walk. Okay, they said Shagget was somewhere here, and the door to where he's hiding was a blue door. So we gotta find a blue door, blue door, blue door, blue door. Blue door. Ho 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 ho. You're mine now, Shagget. <laughs> <laughs>